Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. I am Amalgamash, and this is the video so many of us have been waiting for. I'm going to show you today how to import your own 3D characters into RPG Developer Bakken and assign them those crucial motions and animations that they need to show up correctly in your project. Now, there are a lot of ways to do this, and each way is dependent on your needs and what kind of models you have. If you would rather follow a text tutorial, there is one on the RPG Developer Bakken Wiki, and I will link it in the description below. The easiest way is to import characters from the Smile Game Builder DLC, so we'll do that really fast first. Simply go over to the Resources menu on the left-hand side of the screen, navigate to the 3D Stamps menu, and click Add. Once the Asset Picker opens, you'll be able to see all of the DLC that you have for Bakken, and I have the Smile Game Builder pack, so I'm going to click on that. And once those folders load in, we're just going to navigate to the 3D Stamps and 2D Stamps folder, and you'll have your heroes and heroines, as well as your villagers, villains, and animals, all here. Now, I miss Marie B version specifically, so that's the one that I'm going to import into my project. You can also see the list of associated motions right here with the model, and these are all of the motions that this model had in SGB. Note that they are all pre-named for you. So you can just click Add and Exit and click OK. You don't have to do anything else here. She's already set up. Now, just because you've added the model to your game doesn't mean that it's automatically going to be a cast. To make it a cast, let's go to Database. By default, we'll be in the Casts menu, and we can just click Add. While we are in our Database and Resource folder in the Asset Picker, let's just click on 3D Stamps, 2D Stamps, and click on our Marie model. Click Add and Exit, and that's it. She's ready to go. You can set up her parameters and all of her equipment and abilities and such. Hit Apply and OK. Finally, since we're going to be test playing our game right away, we want to make sure that she looks right on the map. We need to assign her as the starting cast. We'll go to Game Definition to do that. And under Start Settings, just click on the name under Main Cast Operating Cast. That will allow you to select an existing cast. We're clicking on Marie, who, by the way, is named A underscore Heroine 01B. And Add and Exit. Hit Apply and OK. And now we can test play our game. And you can see when she is standing still, she has the correct looped still animation. When she walks, she has the correct looped walking animation, and when she runs, she's got the correct running animation. She's got a bunch of other animations too that I would need to show you using events, but we won't do that here. Nice to see you again, Marie. Welcome to Bakin. By the way, I said that there were many ways to do this. If we were to go to Game Definition, then click on our main cast, Operating Cast, then go to the Smile Game Builder Pack, then select one of the models under the Heroines folder, under the 3D stamps or 2D stamps folder. It would add that one without any problems at all. Hit apply and okay, and it's immediately replaced Marie. It even works perfectly with the test play. Now I didn't show you this method first because this will work with the SGB models from the DLC that are already completely prepared for use with Bakin, but it won't work with just any model, not without a little bit of additional work. And we're gonna go over that too. All right, so let's say you got the G style model pack for SGB and you want to export one of those characters and use them in Bakin because they just look great for your game. Easy enough. If you would like one of the SGB characters from your SGB project to go into your Bakken project, then just open up your project in SGB and go to the Add Assets menu. From here, select the character that you would like to export, and then just click Export. Navigate to the folder on your PC where you would like to export them and click Select Folder. You'll get a pop-up showing you what you've exported. I'm just going to close that. Back to Bakken. We'll now go to Database, and in the Casts menu, we'll just click Add. While in the Asset Picker, we'll click Select File and navigate to the folder that has our SGB model. In this case, it's in my downloads folder. When you see this red and yellow box, that's what you want to click on. Leave the options alone. Just click add and exit. And here's our beautiful new model. Just T posing here in the graphic for moving. That's okay. Let's hit apply and okay. Set her up as your main cast and test play. And oh, look, she doesn't have any animations. Don't worry. We're going to tackle how to fix that next. So for your characters who just like to skate and T pose around the map, there are two different possibilities here. One, all of the animations for that character are baked into the model model itself. Two, the character model is rigged, but all of its animations are in a separate folder, and each of those animations take up their own FBX file. We'll work out both cases. In this case, this model actually has all of its motions in a separate folder, and all of the models that came with this particular Smile Game Builder DLC share these motions. It makes a lot more sense to have the motions separate and being used by a bunch of different models than it does to bake those motions into the models. It reduces file sizes and helps with your performance. It's actually how a lot of popular MMOs handle their animations. Anyways, let's go to resources. Under 3D stamps, you can see that our character is registered here, but she doesn't have anything next to her motion setting on the right-hand side of the screen. So just go ahead and click anywhere in that box. 
It'll bring you to the asset picker and from here, we'll just find our model. She should be in the models folder. There she is at the bottom and click add and exit. What we're doing is assigning it a single motion. This isn't the motion that we're going to use. We're going to change it right now. To do that, we'll go to the motions menu on the left side of the screen. We'll select our new model and on the right side of the screen, we can assign her all of the motions that she needs to function in our game. And this will be very easy to do because her motions are already set up because she was made for Smile Game Builder. But we'll go ahead and click add motion and the motions actually imported with the model in this case, you can kind of see what they look like when they're just bone data on a rig walking around. It's a, it's a, it's a little bit unsettling. Calm down there, SCP. Now, if for any reason you don't see your motions here, we're just gonna select them from file. We'll go to the same folder where our model was exported from Smile Game Builder and we're going into the motion folder. And these are all of the motions for this character. And I want you to take note of the names. Once again, we have descriptive names for every single one of the animations. You can select one motion at a time and click add and exit, or you can hold down the control key to select multiple. If you hold down the shift key, you can select the first motion and then the last motion, and it'll select all of them. We're going to leave the options alone again and click add and exit. And now all of the motions that we have selected have populated the list on the right. Look at her. She's, she's given up on this process. She's done. Don't worry. This is how I felt the first time I went through all of this myself. So now we're thinking, great, we've got all of her motions. However, they need to be named correctly. You see, RPG developer Bakin, just like SGB, is looking for specific animation names whenever it moves your character. If it doesn't find those names, it's just going to use the default static model of the character. We could turn this model around, but it's not moving. I mean, it's moving, but it's not, you know, it's, it's, it's creepy. If you've got a model like that and you've got the animations in, but you haven't been able to tie them to actually making the model move, you can actually pick up this tutorial from this point because we're going to do that next. Once again, resources menu, select our character in this case, this G style pack female, and we're going to rename each of these motions to something more meaningful. We can actually delete this first motion. We are never going to use her T posing in my project, so we can just click the trash can right above. The next motion is one where she appears to be walking. We're actually going to and drag this pane out a little bit so I can see all of the options. And there's a lot of information here, but all you need to worry about is renaming this one by clicking on it. You might have to click on it twice, but slowly and rename it walk. And it doesn't matter if you have a capital W, the animation names are not case sensitive, but you do need to type out walk, W-A-L-K, and nothing extra after that. I'm going to turn loop on for this animation because it would be pretty silly if she just took a single step and then continued to skate around my map. The next animation, she's not doing anything but standing there breathing, so I'll turn loop on and I'll call this one wait. The walk animation will be applied anytime you are hitting a directional key to move your character on the map, and the wait animation will apply anytime you're not pressing anything if your character is just standing there. The next animation I'm going to turn loop on for and call run. Run will be the animation that plays whenever your character is running on the map, whenever your player is holding down the dash key while moving around your map. If you'd like a complete list of all of the supported animation names, they are at the bottom of the 3D characters page on the wiki, but they are wait, battle underscore wait, walk, run, attack, skill, and damage. And this is going to be very important if you are creating your own 3D character that has nothing to do with Smile Game Builder. You're going to need these animations named as such. They don't have to be in this order, but they do need to be named with these names in order for the system to use them contextually. Now, you don't have to name all of the animations for your model, although it would be good practice for you because you can still use all of these animations in the engine. You just need to use an event panel to do so. And you may wish to do that so that you can give your characters more life, more animation. But anyway, hit OK when you're done. We'll click test play. And now our character is breathing. She's actually alive. No, I mean, not really. And she can walk around the map and she can run. Let's go through that process one more time really fast. Database. Casts. Add. Select the model that I want. Click add and exit. Apply. OK. Resources. 3D stamps. That model that I selected. Click on motion. This needs to have something here for all of this to work. Find the model that you want. Click add and exit. Motions folder. Click the model you want. Add motion. Select all the motions that you'd like to add. Add, click add and exit. Name the walk animation walk and make sure you check loop. Name the wait or idle animation wait. Check loop. Name the run animation run and check loop. Name the other animations if you want to name them. Hit OK. Add to your starting casts and game definition if you want to see them in your test play. Apply. OK. Hit test play. And you could do this a few times until you really get the hang of it. But basically, anytime you click in your resource menu and on your 3D stamps, you'll want any of the models that you use in your game to be listed here. You'll want to make sure that they actually have motions registered 
to them and that there's a picture of something over here next to the motion setting. If they do not, you can click on motions and assign pre-existing motions to your characters. Hit OK and make sure that your casts menu in the database has them listed as well. And feel free to change the names. We don't have to keep these A underscore hero 01A type names at all. This is Scion. This is Marie. All right, what about baked motions? Sorry for the scary example. Baked motions are for when a character has motions that are unique to them and are not shared by any other resource. The motions are usually in the animation of the model itself. Games that use a lot of different motions stay away from this method if those motions are shared amongst different models because it can and bloat the file size of the model to have all of the frames of animation in that single file. That is the case with this zombie from SGB. So I'm just going to export her, go into Bakin, go into resources. Let's add her as a 3D stamp. Select from file and then navigate to that folder. It's here it is, S003 zombie. And we've got three things in this folder, but as always, we're going to click the box that is the .fbx file. And that's the one we're going to add and exit. And there is our zombie. There's nothing next to motion. So let's click in that box and we're going to select the zombie.fbx file again and click add and exit. With that, she's moving around. She's actually moving around. But if you sit here long enough and watch her, she's playing through all of the animations that were baked into her model file. This might be the case for you. No problem. We're going to go right into the motions menu and set her up. Here she is again playing through all of her motions and it looks like she just has one animation. One motion. That's okay. Click add motion. Navigate to your 3D model.fbx file again and select it. And do this for as many motions as your character contains. Particular file only has 10 motions, but I don't need all of them. I'm just going to do four. All right, we'll give these the standard names of wait, walk, and run. And we'll go ahead and turn on the looping. But now I want you to notice the start and end frames for each of these lines. They're all set to zero for start and they're all set to 2209 for end. What does that mean? Well, it means that the animations are going to play from the first frame of animation contained in the file and they're going to play until they hit the 2209th frame of animation. That's why it's looping through the entire set of animations that she has. To split these animations up, we're going to have to refer to them by their start and end frames. Now, if you've created your own animations for your model in Blender, you'll know what these frames are. And here is where you can define them. For this model, the start frame for weight is one and the end frame is 242. So now that I've specified the start and end frames, she'll loop through this weight animation. I'm just gonna watch it to make sure that it looks correct. There's no strange jittering or bugging out. It looks like there's a little bit. Now, no other animation here is going to have a start frame of zero or an end frame of 242. In fact, none of the start or end frames are going to be in that range from zero to 242. But we'll look at her walk cycle down. And I know that her walk animation starts at frame 250 and ends at 491. Her run starts at 500 and it ends at 545. She has an animation that I'm going to call attack that starts at 550 and ends at 776. So I'm done, I'm going to click OK, go straight to database and add her as a cast. She's right here under the 3D stamps where we left her. She's got all of her motions registered. Look at that. Click add and exit, apply, and then OK. And this time I want her to be my main character and the only one. So we will walk along the map, which by the way, the animation for her walk is extremely slow. Uh, so we would probably want to, in this case, turn down the walk speed of our character to match that animation. We've also got a zombie dash going on here. Very scary. And then of course her idol where she just terrifyingly looks around for fresh meat to devour. By the way, I exported her from Smile Game Builder and because her animations were baked into the model, the file that I used to reference the animation frames was the .def file that came with the exported model. Incidentally, this .def file is set up in such a way that it can tell Smile Game Builder how to run these exact animations. They're named, they have a start and end frame, and they're set to loop. All right, so what about characters that have nothing to do with Smile Game Builder? Well, they're still going to fall into one of two categories. Either the animations will be baked in, or there will be separate animations associated with that model. In this case, I've scoured opengameart.org, and I have found a free pack of 3D files from Kenny Assets. So back to Bakking and the resource menu, and in the 3D stamps menu, I'm going to click Add, select from file, and they're just in my downloads folder. Once again, in my model folder, character medium.fbx is what I'm after. I know because of the box. 
Click add and exit. Uh oh, sometimes you'll get a warning. Detected loading of a huge model, size 50 or larger. If this is not what you intended, we recommend importing with a scale set to 1 one hundredth of the current scale. This is telling me basically that the model that I'm about to import might be bigger than the map itself. And that's totally normal because Bakken, just like SGB, uses very small model sizes. You can click OK if you'd like to see how this looks, but it's not going to be usable, so I'll hit cancel. We'll have to go through the add process again. This time I'm going to follow the advice and set the scale to point zero zero let's do two we'll leave the other option alone we always want to leave auto optimization checked then click add and exit hit okay on this notification and here is our new character he's looking a bit gray but let's follow the process and get him going it's got nothing next to his graphics setting under basic so let's click select the model and click add and exit nothing by his motion in this case the motions came in a folder called animation so i'll select that and it looks like we have an idle a jump and a run i'll just click the idle leave the scale alone when you import these animations that way they match the size of the model and everything looks right. Add an exit. And now we're going to go down to the bottom right under materials used. This material is all white. It's causing our character to look blank. So let's add a material. These characters came with a folder called a skin. And this is where texture files are. They're already mapped to these models. So I'll just go ahead and click uh, skater female A and click add an exit. Once again, leaving the scale alone. It looks like our model has a texture now. All right, when I go to my models folder, this character doesn't seem to be showing up with their texture. So I'll change their material here as well. And now in the motions folder, we're ready to add those other motions. We'll just click add motion, select from file, animations folder. I'm gonna add all three of these and click add and exit. All right, this came with some animations that I'm going to delete because they are of no use to me. And I'm gonna keep the run, jump and idle. I want to make sure they're all set to loop. But for the idle, I'm of course going to rename that to wait. And for the run, I'm of course going to rename that to walk because we need a walking animation or he's just going to T-pose skate everywhere. Okay. Under database, we will register him as a cast. I guess it's her actually. Hit apply and okay. And I'm going to select her under game definition. Apply. Okay. Now she'll show up during my test play. And that's it. We have successfully imported this character offered by Kenny Assets. Uh, now he's going to skate or she's going to skate around really fast when we hold the shift key down because she doesn't have a run animation associated with her, but she does have an idle or a wait and a walk. She also looks pretty small. I could have definitely turned the scale up on her, so I can just go through the re-import process and fix that. All right, I hope that this tutorial taught you a lot about using your own 3D models in RPG Developer Bakken. Any questions, comments, suggestions, please down below. I try to answer as many as I can. And for more precise and possibly faster help, make sure that you go to the RPG Developer Bakken Discord linked in the description below. It's the official Discord for the software. Make sure you subscribe to the channel for more premier Bakken education. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now. <laughs>